Israeli occupation continues its crimes against Palestinians in Gaza Strip. The United Nations says that Houthi violations force thousands of families to flee homes. Food insecurity in Yemen is expected to rise during the first months of next year. Good evening. Welcome to Yemen Today News. I am Abiradi. Ministry of Health in Gaza said that at least 50 people were killed in a bombing of a United Nations school housing displaced people in Gaza. An official added that the raid occurred at dawn and targeted Al Fakhura school run by the United Nations in Jabalia refugee camp. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs and expatriates of the Palestinian Authority condemned what it described as ugly massacre that targeted Al Fakhura school. The Israeli occupation forces on Saturday ordered an evacuation of a Shifa hospital in Gaza. According to the reports, the troops called the hospital's director to instruct him to ensure the evacuation of patients wounded at the displaced and medical staff and that they should move on foot forward the seafront. This report has more details. Israeli occupation forces ordered the evacuation of the Shifa hospital within an hour Saturday morning. After its seventh week, Gaza's largest hospital has become the main focus of the Israeli occupation. According to the United Nations, an estimated 2,300 patients, workers and displaced Palestinians were sheltering at a Shifa. The health ministry in Gaza has revealed scores of deaths as a result of power outages caused by fuel shortages during the IOF's heavy attacks. The patients in a Shifa hospital are in a dire situation. They can't be moved, yet the IOF continue their bombing. The head of the World Health Organization condemned the attack on the hospital and described it as unacceptable. Witnesses reported seeing tanks and masked soldiers in the hospital grounds at 3 a.m. when patients and civilians were still inside. According to Gaza's Ministry of Health, more than 12,000 people have been killed since the start of the Israeli attack on Gaza. The UN agency's commissioner general warned that basic services like medicine, food, water, and fuel are running out, and the streets have begun overflowing with and is full of dead bodies, which will cause a massive health disaster. A catastrophe involving a lack of safe sanitation and clean water is almost certain. The Palestinian UN ambassador Riyad Mansour urged the Security Council to follow the General Assembly's lead and demand an end to what's happening in Gaza, which constitutes an affront to humanity and crimes against it, as well as a clear and imminent threat to regional and international peace and security. Also, internet and communication services in Gaza have been cut off. This is the third time that communication services have been cut off from the Gaza Strip. Such scenes are repeated every time communications are cut off and the health sector is unable to save anyone. Director of Ambulance at Hospitals in the Southern Gaza Strip describes the communications outage as a loss of hope for life for many seeking ambulance and health services. The violations by the Houthi militia have forced more than 9,300 families to flee their homes. The International Organization for Migration stated that its displacement tracking matrix recorded the displacement of 9,343 families in Yemen. The organizations indicated that these families were displaced at least once in several governments since the beginning of the war. The World Food Program said the humanitarian situation in Yemen is extremely fragile and any disruption in the pipelines of critical supplies such as food, fuel, medicine has the potential to bring millions of people closer to starvation and death. According to the program, the current level of hunger in Yemen is unprecedented and is causing severe hardship for millions of people. This report has more. An international network predicted that food insecurity rates would rise in Yemen by the first month of next year. The Famine Early Warning System Network in November 2023 analysis of the expected needs for the emergency food aid in the countries covered by the network said that the food insecurity crisis in Yemen 
will worsen in the coming year, with an increase of about 1 million people to the list. They added that by May 2024, between 18 to 19 million people will be in need of urgent food aid, compared to 17 million people this November. They pointed out that the deterioration of economic conditions, the decline in income earning opportunities, the rise in prices for basic food and non-food needs, in addition to the reduction in humanitarian aid, all of these factors will lead to the continuation of food insecurity at the crisis level, the third stage of the interim classification for millions of people in all of Yemeni governorates. In Yemen, acute food insecurity is expected to remain critical amid the protracted economic crisis worsened by an anticipated reduction in humanitarian assistance, as 17 million people in Yemen are in need of food assistance. A growing proportion of the population is dealing with hunger emergencies, while 2 million children across Yemen suffer from acute malnutrition. Yemen came on top of the countries in the world facing the most serious consequences of rising prices as a result of the war that it witnessed for nine years in a row after the war was ignited by the Houthi militia. The complexities of ending the crisis and the flattering peace efforts in Yemen have deepened the human tragedy especially with the continued deterioration of the situation. As the need grows, the lack of resources to respond comes with devastating consequences. And above all, Yemen needs a permanent end to conflict so people can safely live, learn and earn a living. Ben Siyab, Siyab. نروح عن القرآن حوس وهذا نروح بثياب ونصلحها مآولنا وكرات من الشوارع والله إن إحنا نكره جل المطر يخسى علىنا البطانية، يخسى الفراش، يخسى الجماش، مسمر برادة، خاص علينا إحنا وجهالنا. فالمأوى الانتقالي هذا الكنتيرة جعلتهم يعيشوا في استقرار للمستفيدين من ناحية سواء من ناحية الأمطار أو لا من ناحية العواصف والرياح والرملية بما أنه عندنا هنا في مارب الرياح بتكون شديدة. The member of the Presidential Leadership Council, Aydarus Azubaydi, met this morning with the acting Chinese ambassador to Yemen. The two sides discussed development in the political process amid at ending the war in Yemen and restoring stability to the region. On his part, the Chinese official affirmed the support of the Presidential Leadership Council for the efforts made by brothers to end the war in Yemen. Military sources in Taiz said that government forces thwarted the Houthi infiltration. The sources reported that government forces were able to thwart an infiltration attempt by the Houthi militia towards government forces' positions in Makbana district. During the past few days, the Houthi militia escalated on various fighting fronts in Taiz government, but such an escalation was confronted by the government forces. Yemeni areas under the Houthi militia's control have received no vaccines. And during Yemeni's health and government circles, especially after the militia leaders portrayed inoculation as an international conspiracy targeting the population, the Yemeni health community feared the Houthis' hostile measures to immunization campaigns would lead to widespread epidemics, especially among children. This report has more details. As the Houthis prevent child vaccination campaigns in regions under their control, deadly epidemics threaten the lives of thousands of children. The World Health Organization has revealed a 58% increase in cases of diphtheria since the beginning of this year, following a major outbreak of measles and rubella. 
According to a study issued on Thursday, data tracked until October 14th revealed that the number of diphtheria cases jumped by 57% compared to 2021 and 2022. The World Health Organization indicated that the number of infection cases has been steadily rising since 2021, with a notable peak in 2023. According to these figures, 1,671 suspected cases of diphtheria have been recorded so far this year, with 109 deaths compared to 1,283 instances reported all of last year. The organization explained that diphtheria is typically a winter disease and the spike in cases observed this year from June to September indicates a deviation from the typical seasonal pattern. In response to the current surge in disease cases, the World Health Organization announced it will provide the Yemeni Ministry of Public Health and Population with an urgent supply of 2,200 vials of antitoxin, a diphtheria antidote, to be distributed in the most affected of areas. But due to the intricate nature of the situation in the country, only 220 vials have been supplied thus far, and the worldwide diphtheria antidote scarcity impacts availability and drives up costs. The United Nations confirmed that the doses it was able to provide are only sufficient to treat 300 patients in critical condition. According to the World Health Organization, recurrent outbreaks of vaccine-preventable illnesses, including diphtheria, are expected to continue in 2024, and the absence of funds and access to vaccines would have a detrimental impact on the health and life of Yemen's most vulnerable people. Coming up in the news. The World Bank says a Yemen economy is still facing high risks. Sea tortoises in Yemen are prone to extinction, with 90% of them are female. The severe gender imbalance will continue until it brings about the complete loss of sea tortoises in Yemen. هناك دراسات عملت في كثير من المناطق الساحلية في المنطقة السوائية وأثبتت ارتفاع نسبة الإناث مقارنة بالذكور لتصل حتى إلى نسبة أكثر من 90% من نسبة الفاقسات وبالتالي سيعرض نسبة الذكور بشكل عام إلى التناقص وربما خلال أعوام قادمة إلى الانقراض للذكور من السلاحف البحرية Welcome back. The International Maritime Security issued a warning expressing concern about the increased threat level to shipping in the Red Sea. The warning came amid the recent Houthi militia threats to commercial shipping in the region, which have intensified amid the ongoing conflict. The International Maritime Security was established to deter threats and reassure mariners in and around Babel Mandeb Strait. The World Bank said that the Yemen economy is still facing greater risk despite the recent slight progress. More on this story is within this report. The World Bank confirmed that the risks to Yemen's economic prospects remain high. Despite some positive developments, the economic outlook for 2024 is surrounded by a lot of uncertainty given the restrictions imposed by the Houthi militia on oil exports and the ongoing truce negotiations. Houthis imposed a ban on oil exports from the government through three attacks with explosive drones on oil export facilities in the months following the end of the UN truce. Yemen still faces profound structural challenges. 
Prospects for growth in the oil sector depend on Yemen's ability to attract foreign investments, which still depend on improving security and achieving peace, and non-oil activity continues to face obstacles due to interruptions in the provision of basic services. The recent settlement between regional powers constitutes an important step towards alleviating long-standing regional tensions that have hindered development prospects in Yemen. The World Bank report pointed out that a decrease in humanitarian aid will lead to a significant increase in the rate of food poverty. It is also likely to have a negative repercussions on public finances, especially given the slowdown in reform momentum. The report stated that this inaction may lead to an increase in monetary financing, which in return may lead to an exacerbation of inflation pressures. The economic stability in the short term depends largely on predictable and sustainable hard currency flows, and also depends on political or military developments if a permanent truce or peace agreement is reached. The Yemeni economy could resume growth within months of such an agreement. Yemen today monitored the water crisis in the Yemeni government that are under the control of the Houthi militia. The water crisis in Yemen is considered one of the most severe crises that the Yemeni citizen suffers from in the various Yemeni governments. Despite Yemen having a large water reserve, but the manipulation and trade of water by the Houthis has put it on the list of services that are lacking for citizens. The Minister of Health participated in the Global South Summit meetings. The Minister of Public Health and Population participated in the virtual sessions of the second Global South Summit hosted by India. At the end of the summit, in which a number of presidents and heads of governments participated. The World Health Organization announced that diphtheria cases in Yemen have risen by 75% this year compared to the past two years. Reports indicated that the diphtheria epidemic witnessed a major outbreak in the year 2023 and infections cases increased by 75% compared to the year 2021 and 2022. The report added that from the beginning of this year, 1,671 suspected cases of diphtheria were reported in the country. Disabled people in Yemen continue to suffer amid conflict. Rehabilitation centers are largely underfunded, especially of children with disability. This report has more details. With all its meager resources, this small center makes an effort to give disabled children, many of whom have gone years without receiving adequate medical care, the assistance that they need. Unfortunately, there are not enough specialized medical personnel or medical technology to handle the influx of children with disabilities. The ELAF Foundation was developed in 2019 to fill the scarcity of institutions geared towards rehabilitating children with disabilities, especially with the rise of displacement. Every day, children undergo physical and speech therapy, and every day the number of cases increases. We receive our funding from benefactors and local organizations, but we struggle with hiring caterers as patient numbers rise. Om Muhammad is among the beneficiaries of the center's free services. She reports that while she senses tangible improvement in her child's mobility, the center is far too remote and it costs a lot of money to get there. Many children in Yemen lack opportunities for physical and mental rehabilitation due to the scarcity of centers, and the ones that do exist are severely underfunded. We started treatment last week. This is our second one, and we're hopeful. But the center lacks a lot of critical resources and is often packed. It is also incredibly far. We're grateful for these services, but the center needs a lot more resources. Living in a nation that lacks basic amenities and endures a chronic state of war is extremely difficult even for able-bodied individuals. Stigma, prejudice, and exclusion from crucial life areas such as health, school, and community engagement are daily realities for children with disabilities. Here is a reminder of the main headlines. Israeli occupation continues its crimes against the Palestinians in Gaza Strip. The United Nations says that Houthi violations forced thousands of families to flee homes.
food insecurity in Yemen is expected to rise during the first months of next year. This is the end of the news. Thank you for streaming with us. It was Abir Ali.